Thanks for joining us today at BIB Today, the daily podcast from the newsroom of Business in Vancouver. I'm Kurt LaPointe, publisher and editor-in-chief. We use the word iconic perhaps a bit too much in our world, but it's fair to say that the venerable Army and Navy retail flagship on West Cordoba and on Hastings, bridging Gastown and the downtown east side, is iconic in our community for its profound, prolific, protracted service. When it closed during the pandemic, it gave rise to concerns about what would replace it and when. We're closer to an understanding of what, maybe not quite when, now with the partnership of two, yes, iconic business leaders in Vancouver, Jackie Cohen, the CEO of Army and Navy, and Colin Bosa, the CEO of Bosa Properties, the development firm, have gone into business together to bring us the next version. Now, I'm going to try to get as much as I can from them in the time we have today. We're going to see how well I do. Great to have you both here. Hi. Thank you, Kurt. Good to be here. Uh, you started to hatch this deal over a steakhouse lunch. Um, who bought? <laughs> you know, I can't remember. Do you remember, Colin? You know, that's a uh, that's a good question. I can't actually. I can't. Yeah. So I'm I'm all for one. I'm I'm zero for one already. I haven't even been able to get that out of you. Um, but but you didn't know each other terribly well. What what did you need to know about the other person? before you were prepared to do this. Jackie, you, it, it was your property. Um, what did you need to know about Colin? Integrity, uh, philanthropy, family. You know, I would say those are the three things that are most important to me and I wanted to find somebody that had those same priorities. And mm. I believe I did. Yeah, Colin? Well, you know, the interesting thing is when you think about these developments and um, they're obviously taking longer and longer, but the construction portion of it is, you know, could be three, four, five years. But when uh, Jackie and I started talking, what we really were talking about, like, you know, we were looking at it through this lens of a four or five year construction project. But I mean, we're hoping that the ownership of the assets lasts multi-generational. And so we started thinking we had to look at it through a different lens. And, and, and I, the reason I bring that up is because what was important to us, and I know it's important to Jackie is uh, zip, what kind of values, like if we're going to be in a partnership, which is more of a, a long-term relationship, uh, like do we share the same values? And, and the one thing that always struck me was um, this asset has been in their family for a hundred years. I mean, that's just remarkable. And, and we as a family and as a business think multi-generational long-term. So, uh, to you know for us that was really important that was what what was something that was you know that we were really interested in yeah jackie i mean i've already read a fair amount about this around the issue of um these being family businesses in their hearts right so um what is it that you were trying to do at this stage of your own career um that that will have this legacy effect. What is it about this development, do you think? Well, as you know, and I think most people in Vancouver know, I have been spending half my life on the downtown east side, and I used to feed the pigeons at Pigeon Park with Grandpa Sam. And I never had any intention of selling this property. You know, when I closed the store two years ago, a year ago, whenever it was, I knew that I would be looking to develop it and to make it all rental. None of it is for sale. I'm sure you read that. It's no condos, you know, it's it's something that my granddaughter Adina and maybe her children that they will um, drive by and be proud of. I think that's the most important thing, a pride of ownership. You know, I really want my family to be proud. I want my family above to be proud. I think that's what has driven my choice to pick the Boza group to, to help me make that. Yeah. Uh, there's so many imponderables left here and, and uh, we're not going to be able to understand everything about this project here in 2021, I'm sure. But um, tell me both uh, as much as you can about what the vision is for this. Colin, let me start with you. Yeah. Um, obviously, as a family and a business, we, we knew of uh, the Cohen family, we knew of Army and Navy, but what's, what's been really interesting as, I mean, we're going through a, a bit of a research phase right now and trying to collect as much information as we can about the community, but it's really interesting is to hear the stories and everybody has an Army and Navy story. 
And, and what's coming through loud and clear is people really connected with the inclusiveness of the store and what it meant to the community. And so when we think about this development moving forward, what we really want to do is capture that inclusive spirit that the Army and Navy, everybody felt welcome at the Army and Navy. And how, mm -hmm. how do we capture that spirit um, and incorporate it into a development? And so, you know, there, with the physical assets, there's Jackie's talking about a rental and a, an affordable rental and there'll be employment generating real estate like office and retail. Um, obviously cultural amenities as well, but how all that comes together, um, you know, yet to be seen. We, you know, we're just going through that design phase right now, but ultimately we want to capture that inclusiveness in the community. And, and that's really what we're trying to, you know, trying to accomplish. Yeah, Jackie, I mean, the, of course, the, the retail flagship was so welcoming. I, I don't know of a Vancouverite who hasn't shopped there, who hasn't, you know, found what was necessary there. And, and particularly for those that didn't have large means in order to do it, it was so inclusive, but it's a store. <laughs> how do you make housing like that? How do, you, how do you do that, do you think? Well, I don't think of it as only housing. I see, I think I could talk about the laneway, you know, the areas you hit on that joins the Gastown side and the downtown east side, the Hastings side. And I want to envision children having ice cream cones. You know, we used to have a great hot dog stand that was so affordable. We sold ice cream and hot dogs. I still see that. I see a single mother maybe with her kid. And, I, you know, I just see family and I see, I see children. I know that some people think that's crazy. They think, well, there aren't going to be kids that want to live in that area. But, you know, I'm hoping that we can create that. Yeah. It, it's... It's a really broad vision, and um, it involves retail. It involves, uh, as you say, it, it's going to be purpose-built with rental apartments. It's not going to be owned in a lot of ways. And and as you know, both of you know, there's there's a tension that always comes into projects like this when they are in some stressed areas about you know how inclusive, um, you know, the the tension between livability and renewal and gentrification, all of these are qualities that are sometimes difficult to reconcile. Colin, speak to that and how, how you want to try to help manage this into the place that Jackie really talks about here, which is a family-friendly place. Well, you, you mentioned a bunch of the tension that we have to manage. And on top of that, how do we create something that is also economically feasible? Yeah. And this isn't going to be easy. And, and, and let me also start by saying we don't have all the answers right now, right? Like um, we, we're, we're not naive enough to think that we're going to go down there and we're going to solve a bunch of problems um, that exist. It's a very challenging area. And, and there's a really a lot of smart people. There's a lot of money going into the area. And, and so, you know, for us, it's trying to figure out we can't be all things to all people, but it's where, where can we lean into certain areas because of the site, because of the assets that we have, you know, that we're developing and, 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 and make the biggest contribution that we can. And, you know, we don't have all the answers, um, but it could be, you know, through the uses that we bring into the development, we're reaching out to um, nonprofits in the community. Uh, we also, what's interesting, both families have uh, foundations um, that we, you know, we view as being a big part of the work that we're going to be doing down in the community. So we're, we're trying to leverage all the resources that we have. And, um, you know, we're talking a lot about this concept of balance and trying to get it, get it right. Jackie, uh, uh, I'm not going to necessarily ask for what the profit and loss picture, what the pro forma looks like, uh, you know, in 2021, but, but both your families uh, are extremely benevolent in this community. Uh, they both have a great history of philanthropy. Um, how much do you feel you're going to have to bring that quality of it into play in order to ensure that it meets these other social requirements that include affordability? I leave those details to Colin. You know, I don't know. I'm along for the observation. I don't know how the business and the development and stuff work, Kirk, I just know how the heart works. And I just know, you know, maybe I'm delusional, but I, I have a vision and we'll see if, if Colin and his team can make that work. 
Um, obviously, as Colin says, it has to be financially sustainable. You know, as you know, I have a charity face the world. This is really, you know, this project, the Cohen building. I don't know if you know what it's called that. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. No, it's going to be called the Cohen block. I understand. Right. Oh, sorry. The Cohen block. Yeah. Um, I just, I don't even know the answer to that. I just know that, um, it's definitely going to have a charitable component because Face the World and the Boza Foundation both feel very strongly about giving back to the city and in particular to that community. Yeah, and, and yeah, sorry, sorry, if I could just jump in there. You, you mentioned how much do you need, uh, you know, f the philanthropic aspect to make it sustainable. We're, we, we, we want to make this sustainable development, but it's really not about a need. Um, I think it's more about a, a want, and, and, and Jackie has made that very clear that she wants to, um, you know, uh, work, and, and also with our charitable uh, foundation, we lean into food security and children and all these things, and um, it's just an opportunity for us that we're, we want to lean into. Yeah, I, I don't want to uh, bring you back to the days where the Woodward's project was being uh, anticipated, uh, Jackie, because, uh, I mean, it's, a, it's almost a different era now that we're in. But um, when you talk about your own vision of this, uh, and when you say you want to speak from your heart and about a project like this, what is it that you feel this can address? Maybe not solve, but address. Well, I think Colin had a really good point that there's no way we're going to be able to be everything to everybody. I think that the main thing is to change in a positive way in particular, Hastings Street. Cordova mm -hmm. is well on its way with uh, Blood Alley, and you know, there's a lot going on. Cordova is an extension of the Shaw Tower and the Pack Rim, you know, and it just keeps on going. Hastings, you really drive down Hastings and you just hit a wall, you know? Uh, there's a lot of very positive across the street with the Carol Lee China Founda Chinatown Foundation built block going up, but there's still, Hastings is really a troubled area. And I think that this can transform Hastings Street without displacement, by inclusion. Um, but again, maybe some of me is delusional and optimistic, but that's just who I am, you know? <laughs> uh, Colin, uh, the city of Vancouver, as we all know, is uh, world class in the speed with which it helps people through the permitting process. Um, he says lying. Uh, is is this something that can be done by 2025, 2026? <laughs> what do you think? Yeah, I mean, I, what I can say is we, you know, we want to move as quickly as we can. Um, obviously, um, there, you know, as you say, the city has had its challenges moving projects along, and and we know that it's not going to be easy. Um, but you know, we're hopeful because. The city has come out recently with, uh, you know, some criteria on how they want to move projects forward, and um, and we think we tick those boxes. But we haven't formally applied to the city. We're going to do that later on this summer, and um, and once we do that, we'll get formal feedback, and then we'll know where we stand. Yeah, and Jackie, when when you first face uh, whoever it is, the planners, permitting people, the politicians, whoever it's going to be. What do you give me a little bit of a dress rehearsal on what your uh, what your pitch is going to be here? You know, it's so funny to call it a pitch because I'm just so such an open book and I just speak so from my heart. I get welled up when I talk about it. So, you know, I had to really make sure I always have Kleenex around. So I, I Kirk, all I can tell you is I'm going to speak from the heart and how important it is for me to to be able to do this project, you know, there's not a lot of options. If, you know, we just need to make this happen because the street, as I say, in particular Hastings is really in need of something that is a wow, that is, you know, both people, you know, that all people, we also want to attract a lot of those younger people too. So that's part of a challenge too, you know, uh, you've got all these people that are going to be working at the post office and the, you know, all those young kids, the workforce, you've got the nurses at the hospital. How do we include the single moms and the kids and the, you know, the welfare recipients, as you may know, you know, I do own a SRO right next door on Cordova street called the Hilden. And yeah. I'm really proud of it because it's filled with people that have, most of them have pride of ownership. And that's what we're looking for. We're looking for people that are really proud to say that they live there. Um, 
I, and then, so there's my shtick. So, Colin, what about yours? What's your uh, what's your shtick? Well, um, we are working with Michael Green, and uh, you know, Michael is notoriously known for uh, for for tall timber. So that's that's uh, an avenue that we're looking at, and and uh, you know, another um, initiative that the city's looking for. Um, but uh, obviously, levels of affordability. Um, uh, employment generating uses. This is a transformational project and we hope that the city shares our vision. Yeah. If, if you had to point though, Colin, to the kinds of uh, hurdles that you feel you need to scale in order to make this the successful project that you and Jackie both wish, um, what, what are they? Is it, is it trying to figure out the height of the building, the number of units, the the you know what the retail space is going to be like um, price point we, we, where where are the priorities for this well I think it's everything you touched on right so it's density uh, it's potentially height it's um, it's uses it's levels of levels of affordability will be a big one um, mm -hmm. uh, the other thing that you know we haven't touched on is the heritage component uh, along Cordova Street which is very very unique I know uh, the heritage uh, you know, officers in the city will have a say on that. So, so a lot of a lot of moving parts, but um, that's also the opportunity. You could have, though, Colin, uh, probably found some less complex enterprise to work with here in the next little while. Um, may, maybe I asked this in a different way earlier, but why did you want to do this? Well, it's you know the. Every project right now seems to be complex. Everything is is a challenge, and and uh, you know trying to get projects mm -hmm. through the city is is challenging. But um, this project is unique. Uh, just you know where it sits, the size of the project, the transformational uh, potential of the property. We do have um, you know I think we have some great ideas for the property that we're working through, and uh, we're very excited. Yeah, and Jackie. Uh... My, my question to you is, uh, can you recreate anything like Army and Navy in the retail space? We had such a great run, Kurt, you know, 101 years. Everywhere I go, people have an Army and Navy story. I think it's a great, uh, no, you can't recreate it. <laughs> it would be basically your answer. You know that the retail industry has changed hugely. And I think that it's just uh, something that I'm really proud of, that the Army and Navy was a thriving business for 101 years. And, and I'm flattered. Everybody wants to know, are you reopening an Army and Navy? But I just want to be honest, those days are gone. So. OK. Well, look, both of you, uh, thank you so much for your time. Uh, best wishes on this journey. Um, you know, uh, I want to get this before the Canucks get a Stanley Cup, OK? Just letting you know. <laughs> That will happen for sure. All right. Jackie Cohen and Colin Bosa, thanks so much for your time today. Thanks, Kurt. Bye-bye. I'm Kurt LaPointe, publisher and editor-in-chief of Business in Vancouver. Thanks so much for watching.